I become a Delta, you know, I'm singing a song, you know, and I'm just excited, excited. And, you know, I'm going through campus. Like, I was already not a shy bone, but it was like having those letters, it's like, oh, I'm somebody. Like, you know, y'all thought I was something. I'm something. Now, you know, I was just prideful. My uh, best friend, me and her, was talking about our path with God. And, you know, we were just, you know, walking and stuff. And I was like, hey, girl, you know, what's going on? Um, how's your, you know, day going? And she's like, girl, I just really just been trying to focus on God. And she was in an organization, too. I said, so have you been, you know, doing anything with your organization? She was like, girl, I kind of pulled away from him. So I remember when she said that, I was like, okay. I remember going to sleep. Before I went to sleep, I said, Lord, I said, whatever you have for me, I said, Lord, I just want a better relationship with you. It's like they went into attack mode. They was like, what? You denouncing? And I remember like, I could hear like them arguing, them fussing, you know, why would you do that? You know, it's going in and like, I could hear God saying, choose me this day. Well, Mercedes, it's an honor to have you on the channel today. We are in Arkansas, yes. first time. Mm -hmm. You are our first recording in Arkansas, okay. which is amazing. Uh, for the people who don't know you, who maybe have never seen you, uh, could you just introduce yourself for the people who are watching right now? Yes, my name is Mercedes Vaughn. Uh, like you said, I'm from Arkansas. Um, I am a proud mother of a little girl named Angel Diane Vaughn. Uh, she is my miracle baby, so I am forever grateful for her. Uh, I am also one of the uh, outreach leader in my church at Body of Christ Worship Center on the leadership of Alfred Warren Jr. and uh, Rosalind Warren. So, yes. Amen. Um, Mercedes, again, super thankful that you're here uh, to share about what Jesus has done in your life. Let's start with your uh, childhood. Tell us about your testimony of Jesus, starting with your childhood. Yes, so um, growing up, I, I'm from a small town uh, called Fordyce. Um, I was uh, raised by a single parent. It was me and two of my brothers. And so growing up, my mom just made it her mission to uh, grow us, to raise us uh, in church. So we had no choice uh, growing up. You know, you played, but when it came down to Sunday and Wednesday, we was, you know, at church. Um, which I'm very thankful to this day because uh, she will always say, if I've done nothing else, you know, I gave you guys back to God a long time ago. So her setting that foundation for us, you know, made us grow up to have our individual relationship with God. So even if we stirred away or, you know, did our own path, you know, we still kept God as our core, regardless on what life decisions we made. And so... um I just kept that, you know, as a little kid, I never really understood, but I know as a child, she will always say that uh, I will always pray. Um, even when I was a little kid, you know, when she kind of stopped going to church, um, you know, I always wanted to go, you know, if she didn't go, I was in somebody's lap going to, you know, vacation Bible school or anything that was like, it was just always, uh, I feel like something that God just, I just have a personal relationship, you know, with God as a kid. And, um, I'm just grateful because looking back, like that's, that's, you know, that's who, who kept me, you know, and, um, that's like where I am today. Like he is my Lord and savior. He is, God Almighty, and I'm just forever grateful uh, for him. And just going back on my childhood, you know, from a kid going to like, you know, high school and even going to college, I uh, kept God in my core, you know, and being um, the only girl out of two, three boys, I just always been like that go-getter. Mama always told me, you know, as a kid, I was always one of her kids that she didn't have to worry about because I always mm -hmm. had my mind made up. I kind of already knew what I wanted to do. Like, even after high school, you know, uh, they would ask me what I wanted to do. And I always said I wanted to be a nurse. Uh, that was always something I wanted to do. I wanted to become an RN. So even then, you know, I would pray, ask God, you know, Lord, you know, help me, you know, get into college and, you you know, make a way. And my faith was just always strong. But as a kid, I really didn't understand. You know, I knew who God was, but my faith was just so strong. So when I prayed, I never doubted it. Mm -hmm. And when I did pray, it came to pass. So like, you know, um, going back to school, you know, even from a kid, from like middle school to high school, you know, I always pray. Like even in school, they would call me granny because, you know, I had that old soul. And uh, even playing basketball, uh, one of the ladies in my church gave me a prayer cloth and so uh, when we got ready for our games we will get the prayer cloth and put it in the center we will pray before mm. our game and we will always win as simple as that is like you know we have faith not in the prayer cloth but just like just 
putting guy in, you know, first before we even played a basketball game. And so even going to college, you know, um, people just seen like how bubbly I was. Uh, even in the dorms, you know, I would I would still have that prayer cloth. I would even pray. Like they'd be like, you know, I got a test cone. Like, okay, you want to pray? They'd be like, sure, you know what I'm saying? And they'd be like, oh yeah, you know, you're going to be an evangelist or, you mm. know, like, you know, like, you know, you always, you know, praying and stuff like that. And I just never mind, like, I was never ashamed of God. I never mind praying, you know, I was always me, you know, I wasn't like, you know, just out here holy than thou. I just was never ashamed to pray. I was never ashamed to, you know, tell people how much I love God and, and, and that's just what, you know, kept me through it, even, you know, in college and, I was first generation going to college, you know, nobody in my family on my mom's side went to college. So first generation to graduate from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. I got, I received my bachelor's degree uh, there. Even in college, you know, my faith was even tested when it came down to basically like, I wanna say finding my identity, but kind of like, you know, cause when you're in college, you know, you by yourself, there's no rules. It's like freelance, you know, you kind of can like see I ain't gonna say what the world holds, but kind of like, you know, you're on your own. You know, no one is telling you, no one is holding your hand, telling you to go to college or go to class, or anything right. like that. There was times where, you know, I got interested, you know, I uh, I went to school, you know, did my work, but, you know, there was just certain things at the school that, you know, came to my attention. Like, you know, I was always goofy, you know, doing my work, you know, playing basketball. And um, I just remember, like, even in college, like, it was just so much that was was like just being introduced to me like when it came down to like different uh organization people from different countries and cultures and uh and so I was just like oh my god you know you would see people the same color as you or the same race well not the same your same race but they would speak different languages so it was just like okay you know that was new I remember me and my best friend we went to college together we was always nosy you know always you know just playing around being into everything you know because in my hometown we didn't have like half of what the university had you know we was used to the same people you know your little country stores and stuff like that but going to college you know you introduce a lot of things and so I will one particular thing I would say was uh, about our junior sophomore year you know we were just you know just walking around as we always do you know just being to different stuff you know just seeing what the college um has or whatever and I remember like when we'd be in the dorms we will always see like these group of people in like, you know, different um, color shirts. We will, you know, see them like, you know, like, you know, chanting and dancing and stuff, you know, we love to dance. So I was like, okay, you know, like, this is cool, but you know, they'll be throwing a different size and stuff like that. And so, you know, we were just like, oh my God, you know, that, that looks fun. So, you know, we will go outside and just, you know, just see like, what was the hype about, you mm. know, just kind of like, just like, okay, like, and, you know, we never understood, like, what sign they was throwing up. We just seen that they was dancing and stomping. And we was like, you know, hey, we want to see what's that about. And uh, one of the ladies that was in one of the organizations, uh, she was our mentor prior to coming to college. When we seen her, we was like, okay, you know, like, she doing it. So we want to know, like, you know, what is this? You know, like, what, what are these organizations? Like, what do these colors mean and stuff like that? And I remember, like, you know, we were just walking around and we just so happened to end up in the gymnasium on campus. And we remember seeing, like, like the crowd on, like, both sides. And people were just packed and, you know, chanting and people had gills. And we were like, what is going on? And so the lights come off and we see, like, these group of ladies, like, all in, like, military, not military form, but, you know, like, they was all, like, in a line. And, you know, they had a mask on. And, you know, they were singing and they were throwing up, you know, um, their organization and singing to the people that, you know, the founders of that organization. And, you know, and they was chanting, you know, Delta Sigma Theta. And so I was just like, it was like, okay. It was like, you know, so we excited and stuff. And so, you know, um, after they, you know, crossed and, uh, you know, they pledged and stuff like that, you know, this was like our, oh, like I said, I think it was like our sophomore, junior year. And I remember uh, we was like walking around, you know, we was like, okay, you know, we know we was in our dorms. Like, okay, you know, I can see myself doing that, you know, kind of like practicing doing the steps, you know, because you do, because one thing about it, we told us, you know, you couldn't 
do what they was doing because it was considered an insult, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like they work hard, they went through that. So, you know, whatever you do behind closed doors, don't let them see it because, you know, it was like disrespect thing. I remember we was at a basketball game. One of the girls was like, you know, hey. And it was amongst other, you know, Delsa's and the advisor at the time. And she was like, no, y'all interested? And, you know, in college, you don't supposed to tell people, you know, your interests. Like, it's supposed to be a secret thing. Like, whatever you was, like, interested in, you don't know one's supposed to know. So, you know, when they asked us up in the open, we were just like, is this a trick question? You know, like, do we supposed to say yes? You know, we interested or what? And so, because it was like, I want to say like maybe like five or six of them around. And we were just like, yeah, you know, yeah, we are interested. Like, okay, they was like, you know, well, we having an a interest in me at this time, you know, be on campus at this time, you know, and, and uh, like, all right, then. And so we ended up finding a flyer and, you know, we just, you know, excited. We was like, oh, shoot, you know, we're going to be stepping, we're going to be stomping, you know, not even understanding what the organization was doing because everybody was like, do your research, do your history about the organization. So when we, and remind you, we like, 18, 19 years old, you know, we're from a small town. We ain't never heard anything about Greek life or anything like that. So we like, okay, well, all right, we need to know the founders. You know what I'm saying? We need to know, like, what the founders do. You know, it's 22 founders. You know, we need to know, like, you know, what they stand for. You know, they stand for, you know, uh, sisterhood, leadership, and they found on Christian principles. And when we seen that, we was like, mm. okay. That was like, hey, not only is this a legit organization, they found on Christian principles. It said it right here, you know, so this got to be up, guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, this has to be something that, why, why, you know, why would they say that? Why would they say based on Christian, Christian principles, you know, if they didn't believe in God? So that was just a plus. I was like, okay, this is my sign. You know, this this got to be something God want me to do. And so when it got down got down to like the interest me and so you know we had connection you know what i'm saying like because when you join an organization you know everybody don't get in you know it's, it's through a process some people get in by you know affiliation or you know by somebody in their family member you know uh to have like that pool well on, on us you know we had our mentor that was already in the organization so you know that was kind of like a leeway to where we can like jump the you know jump the line and so i remember Interest me came up, you know, we got the information. And then after that, you know, they give you this packet, give you this deadline on, uh, you know, when everything got to be due. And so, you know, we did all that. And then, you know, once that's done, you know, then they call you for like, you know, an interview. And so it was like two steps. You got the interest me, the interview, and then you have the actual induction meeting. And so, you know, I got the um, interview. I remember getting the call. I worked at J.C. Penney's. I remember getting the call, and, you know, the girl was like, you know, hey, this, uh, this is such and such. Meet me at this time. And she was like, I remember her being, she was whispering. I'm like, what you say? And she was like, meet me here. I'm like, okay. And then she hung up. I'm like, Lord, I don't even know if I even got the right. So, and uh, when I got the call, you know, my best friend was like, because we didn't know we, if we both got in or not. So we didn't want to say, like, Hey, did you get the call? And then the other one then. Mm. And so when we got back to the dorm, I was like, she was like, yeah, I got a call. Like, okay, okay, okay. Got the call, got the interview. And, you know, um, they, they, they ask you questions about the organization. You know, what access do you have? And I remember in, in the interview, you know, I would say, you know, the access I can bring is, you know, my personality. Because, you know, coming from a small town, when I came to college, I didn't, you know, lack any friends. Like, I was always a people person. I was just that person that can be friendly with anybody. Like, I never met a stranger. So... I just felt like, okay, well, any access I can bring to an organization is me because, you know, I'm God-fearing. You know, I don't mind going above and beyond. You know, I'm available when needed. You know, you know, just telling them everything of me, what I can bring to make the organization. Because it's like, I didn't need them. I, you know, they made it needed me, you know, to see, you know, what I can bring. After the interview, you know, uh, the girl when I mentored, she was like, Mercedes, you didn't do good on the interview. And I was like... Oh, I thought I did good. You know, she was like, no, you didn't answer none of the questions right. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then she was like, well, I'm going to try to see if I can pull. Because when it got down to picking people, it go through like a point system, you know, as far as like, you know, your grades. Uh, of course, you know, you having to pay for the, you know, the uh, organization to get in right. and all that. So my score was low and I was like, oh. And then my best friend, you know, she did good on her, her interview. 
So she was kind of already in. So the, so the, my the mentor at the time, she was like, you know, you know, I'm gonna pull for you. I'm gonna, you know, try to get you in. Like, all right, then. I was like, um, okay. And then I got to praying, and my best friend, she was like, well, if I don't, if you don't get in, I'm not gonna get in. I was like, no. Nah. I was like, you know, one of us gotta do it. I was like, and I remember praying, like, okay, God. I was like, you know, Lord, if it's for me, if it's your will, you know, let it happen. Make a long story short. Got the call, got in the organization, and boom, you know, I become a Delta, you know, I'm singing a song, you know, and I'm just excited, excited. And, you know, I'm going through campus. Like, I was already not a shy bone, but it was like having those letters, it's like, oh, I'm somebody. Like, you know, y'all thought I was something, I'm something. Now, you know, I was just prideful. Before even college, I remember one of my cousins, her husband would tell me, like, you know, you don't need to be no, because I was telling them, you know, back at home, because like I said, our first generation to graduate college, and then I'll be the, I was the first generation to join an organization. So I was like, I remember him saying, you know, that's all the devil. And I was like, well, how can it be all the devil? You know, when they say they're based on Christian principles, you know, we pray before we do everything. And he was like, no, he was like, you know, that ain't nothing but devilish. But I was like, you call him the devil, but... I'm, I'm I'm more of like a viewer person. Like if you tell me something wrong, I need to see it. You know, I need an example. I need a description. Like show me where this wrong in the Bible. And that was the thing that he didn't show me. He just said it was of the devil. And see where I come from growing up, Church of God in Christ, everything that you did, it's like you was going to hell. Like, you know, they taught us like, you know, if you played basketball, you was going to hell. Like, you know, it was just, they would put fear in you saying that anything that you didn't, anything that wasn't glorifying God, you were going straight to hell. Mm. You know, coming from that, I was like, you know, I'm not even, I'm not, you know, I'm not even going to take that because growing up, that's what y'all told us. We're going to hell for everything. So I don't even believe you. 2016, I pledged. 2018, my senior year, my former sisters, you know, they had graduated. And so this is my senior year. And I remember, like, even in the organization, we would say, like, certain things. And, you know, coming from, you know, uh, church, I knew the Bible, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, there was times, you know, we had Bible study and they would, uh, you know, we would have, like, you know, uh, different scriptures you had to quote and stuff like that. And I remember um, we was in our chapter meeting, and I remember when, uh, so when you have a chapter meeting, you know, they have, um, it's like the... People in the organization, then you have the executive board. And I remember um, we had a, a board meeting. I remember the president, the vice president, the chaplain, and the treasurer, and the financial secretary. You know, they all sit at the top. And I remember um, the president would go in, and she would uh, say her part. And I remember when she said her part, instantly, it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He was like, it's not the Bible. And I remember... Uh, telling my best friend, you know, we both looked at each other when she said it, and I was like, "Girl, I was like, you know, after church, I was, I mean, at church, but after our um, our, our meeting, I was like, hey, you know, that part they said in the uh, chapter meeting, I was like, you know, I was like, man, that's that's in the Bible, and she was like, I know, she was like, this can't be right, so right then and there, like, I was like, they pulling out the Bible, so when I like, you know, Google tell you everything, so I literally just like, you know, uh, typed in, you know, what we say in the meeting, and then the scripture, of First Corinthians thirteen eleven came up. And so I was like, um, oh, I was like, we quoting the Bible. So I remember, you know, pulling my advisor aside. I was like, hey, I was like, you know, don't you know, you know, we're, we're quoting the Bible. And she was like, and I remember her saying, not quoting, I said, we paraphrasing. And she said, well, there isn't really no um, perfect way to paraphrase or plagiarize the Bible. And I was like, but we using God's word, but we putting it as Delta. So then I feel like the spirit, the Holy Spirit was even dealing with me then. But like, you know, when you're young, and I, I want to say that my relationship wasn't strong with God. It's just like my mind wasn't fully mature. Yeah. And so like, um, I was just like, I brushed it off. So, like, okay, I was like, well, maybe, you know, this is just something that they do, you know what I'm saying? Because I was like, you know, we still praying, so it's yeah. okay. You know, I brushed it off because I'm like, this is what I want to do. And, you know, we praying, so obviously it can't be that bad. And Mercedes, just to clarify, what was it that they were, that you heard? So, and I'm just going to say this part. So, like, in our rituals, so each chapter has a ritual. Uh, Delta Sigma Theta, they have a ritual. Uh, any Divine Nine, they have a part. And so, uh, when it came down to, and I'm just going to read this this part. So, like, you know, uh, in the ritual, when it came down to each meeting, the president, she would say... Um, and this that you're reading, um, what is it exactly coming from? So it's so it's coming from the ritual. It's the, the greatest of these. And the ritual is supposed to be secret, but, you know, 
It's on Google. You can research it. People has you know put it out there. It's a ritual from the the um, the ritual that we have that they have for Delta Sigma Theta, hmm. and the scripture that they they pull from was First Corinthians thirteen eleven. And so on this part, uh, this basis is where the president will start out her um, her beginning of the um, of the meeting. And so I'm just gonna read this part. Go for it. And. Um, so the part that, and this and this whole part is considered the meditation that deltas use, and uh, they basically like pull the whole chapter of First Corinthians thirteen, and I'll just read like the first two. It says, "Though I speak with the tongues and learn in the profound and have no love, I am a noisy gong and claiming symbol." When she said that, you know, it automatically hit me. And then when she read on, I'm not going to read the whole thing. And the one that really hit me was, and that's when I felt like the Holy Spirit hit me, was like, God was like, hey, something ain't aligning. And that's when he was when they said, when I was a pyramid, I talked as a pyramid. I understood as a pyramid. I thought as a pyramid, but now I have become a delta. I am done with the ways of those intended to be deltas. And that's from 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, it says, when I was a child, I understood as a child. You know, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away those childish things. So I even took that to my advisor. Like I, when I when I found that and when I heard it and then I even brought it to the, you know, her from the ritual, she was like, it's like they brushed it off. So I was just like, oh man, I was like, something ain't right. But then again, it's like, you know, when your spirit is saying something and your flesh, you know, that even the Bible tells you rust not against flesh and blood by spirit and spiritual warfare. So it's like, I was already bowing in, like I feel like, you know, God was already dealing with me then, but something in me just still wanted to be in the organization. And so fast forward, you know, I stayed in there. And so here it is, it's 2017, you know, now, uh, so when you're in an organization, you know, you have a certain amount of people that, you know, join and then, you know, people become seniors. So a lot of people that was in on the same line as I was in, it was 22 of us. So baby, like 17 was already getting ready to graduate. So after that, it was uh, the people that are still in the, in the organization, they have to get ready for a new line to come in. So at that time, God was already dealing with me. You know, everything had died down. It was like God was just like, you know, everything they was doing, you know, from the rituals to the chanting to the songs we were singing, like some of the songs we were singing, you know, all of my love, my peace and happiness, you know, it uh, belongs to Delta. And I remember when I was singing it, I was like, and I would try to change y'all, like my peace and happiness belongs to Jesus. You know, I would try to like, instead of saying Delta, I would say Jesus to make it like be okay. Like, okay, God, you know, they saying Delta, let me put Jesus in it. So, you know, but I was saying it silently instead of openly. I remember like uh, it was our senior year. And at that time, they was like, hey, Mercedes. They was like, you know, we got to bring a new line. And they was like, we need y'all to bring them through. And I was like, okay. And I was like, and at that time, I was like, I don't really want to do it. Because like God was tugging on me like that part in the ritual, like, you know, First Corinthians. I was just like, God was like, hey, you don't need to do this. So like, okay. I was like, you know what, God, I'm not even going to do it. So I remember my advisor was like, you know, I feel like you'd be a good fit because when it come down to joining, when it would come down to bringing another line, they start a whole new executive board. You got the president, the chaplain. It's like, you know, you having to fill those positions. And so when you bring a new line in, there's a whole nother executive board and it's called the Minerva Circle. And so the Minerva is something that, you know, that Delta's wear on their uh, jacket. It's a shield. And if you go on, on the jacket, it's the the crest that they have. And the Minerva is pointing this way. And if you Google Minerva, it's called the God. She's the goddess of wisdom. Mm. And so uh, when they got ready to, you know, start a new line, they was like, you know, we need you to be uh, the leader. I'm like, no, no, you know, can we have somebody else to come in? They was like, you know, Mercedes, I feel like, you know, you would be the best fit. So I was like, and at that time, you know, God was already dealing with me. You know, I didn't know what directions he was leading me. But I was like, no, like someone was in me like, no, you don't need to do that. Like, you don't need to be, not only did you join this organization, but now you finna be a leader of so many young ladies just coming in. So I was just like, no, I was like, you know, can somebody else do it? They was like, we feel like, you, you know, you're fit. They was like, man, you know, your personality, like, you know, like, that was like, you know, they even said like, bro, they was like, you God fearing. People already know you around campus because I was really involved. Like when I played Delta, I was involved. I was in every chapter meet, you know, I was in every, you know, community service, like whatever they had on, on campus. 
you, you better know that I was there. You know, I was dressed and all that. And so when the opportunity came, you know, and I brought the description back to my, my advisor, I was like, we are, you know, playing with God. I was like, you know, I said, we are taking God's word and switching to Delta. And they was like, you know, you know, we love God. And, you know, this is, you know, we, we would never do something like this. Like, okay. So they kept on pressuring me, like, you know, the pressure. And, you know, I had them in my in my ear. And I had some of the ladies that brought me through was considered my profile. They was like, you know, nobody else can make had this, had this position but you. Like, you the best fit to, you know, bring these girls through. So I was like, all right, then, guys. So, you know, I was trying to reason. You know, I was like, okay, guys, like, how about this? If I do it, I'm going to bring them to you. I was like, you know, I remember having this conversation with God. Like, all right, God. I was like, you know, I'm going to let you get the glory. I said, what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to psych them. I'm going to be this leader and just tell them, hey, even though you join this organization, don't uh, stop your relationship with God. Hmm. So here it is 2018, and we bringing in 30 girls. I was, you know, considered the dean of pledges, uh, like the mother duck. And I was considered the leader of Minerva Circle because, you know, she's the head. I remember, like, those girls coming through, and it's like my identity changed. Like, I was mean. I remember, like, you know, getting all in some of the girls' face because when you're in line, they teach you that. Well, I ain't going to say, like, the attitude, but, you know, when you're online, you know, you 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 know, you kind of, you get, I ain't, I'm not going to say get talked bad to, but there is people that tend to try to manipulate you or, you know, kind of see, like, where you are, whether you're weak or whether you're strong. Right. You know, I just kind of, like, imitate it. Like, you know, when you're a child, you imitate what you see. I just imitated on what was done to me. And so, you know, when it came down to, like, getting them straight, making sure they know that they uh, information, you know, I would be in their face. You know, I would say stuff like, you know, you don't know your stuff. So I went against everything that I told God I, I was going to do. You know, mm. I said, you know, I'm going to bring them to you. But here I am trying to drill in this information, you know, to them. And then after that, you know, they came through and, you know, they, uh, you know, they learned their information. You know, we even had an induction, you know, where they go through this process. Like, once you go through the, the pledging you go through induction and you know you consider walking through the burning sands and so at that point you know what everyone the burning sands so it's like what you it's considered like you walking through like not like fire or anything like that it's just like not even gonna say like a walk of faith it's just something that you just walk through it's just a process so it's like they literally like put down sand and you know you walk through it to you know get ready to say what you need to say as far as like you know saying that i promise not to share any information about the organization i promise to keep all the the crest the trust the the promises the secrets and all this stuff of delta so it's just another ritual to come in mm-hmm. into the organization. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, um, and, and no one can come in. You have to be a part of the organization. So it's like a formal meeting with just members, like mm-hmm. just Deltas. So, you know, you come in. So, you know, the people like myself and some of the ladies that I did brought the line through, we'll be at the front. And then the ladies will come through in their white robes and they, you know, walk through the sand, kneel down, and they repeat the oath. You know, or, you know, saying like, you know, they got to announce their name and, you know, and repeat, you know, that I will, you know, you know, like you like kind of like when you at the courthouse, they tell you raise your hand and right. you got to make an oath to promise mm-hmm. not to do this and do that. Even then, you know, I will be looking and it was like some be like, this is not right. You know, but at this point, I feel like I was just too late. You know, I'm already in it. It's too late. I already done and done, you know, got these girls in it. And so at this point, it's 2018. I done graduated. I'm done with the organization. Well, I'm not done, but, you know, I'm not I'm not an active member. And I remember the ladies, you know, they, the girls that I brought through, you know, they were just happy, you know, and they was calling me mom. You know, just, you know, I just thought, you know, okay, you know, I did my part. Now it's time for me to do me. And so I ended up getting pregnant in 2018. I had my little girl. She was born one pound, 14 ounces. Uh, grade two brain, very chronic lung disease. And I'm saying this to say because going back to the conversation, like I said, I grew up in church. I'm going to say my relationship with God had like, you know, stranded or anything like that. But after having my baby and going through what she went, what she went through, it, it uh, opened my eyes and, and I gained a relationship stronger with God uh, because, you know, it's one thing to become pregnant, but to have your first child, you know, being born early, you know, she wasn't crying. She didn't have a heartbeat, you know, and it was like, I thought it was a punishment. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, you know, all that I've done, I was like, this is a punishment, you know, for me. So make a long story short, I was in the hospital and, you know, I was depressed. I was like, you know, wondering, like, you know, what did I do, you know, to to do this? Like, you know, 
And so, you know, she on a breathing machine, you know, they telling me, you know, well, you know, oh, she got a grade two brain bleeding. And just all of this is just going on. Fast forward, here she is, she five months and you know, the grain the grade two brain bleed resolved. And now they saying, you know, her heart is open. It's like you know, like Miss Vaughn, you know, her heart never closed. They was like, We got you got two options. You either got to do immediate heart surgery or if you wait, she'll be on the wait uh transplant transplant list for a new heart. So I was like, oh my God. And so at that point, I just gave up. I was like, you know what, guy? I was like, I remember laughing at the doctor because I was like, God, this is you. I was like, you're going to have to fix this. You know what I'm saying? And so even in the hospital, like those long nights, I never gave up. You know, I had my, my church behind me. You know, I had people praying for me. Even in the midst of my depression, I had people, you know, they're praying for me. And I was, I remember praying with my daughter. And I say, I was to say like, that process grew my relationship with God, like my faith. And so now it's 2018, baby girl strong, you know, got the heart, uh, her heart fixed. She's strong. She's healthy. And so now it's like 2019. And I remember um, my uh, best friend, Mary, was talking about our path with God. And, you know, we were just, you know, walking and stuff. And I was like, hey, girl, you know, what's going on? Um, how's your, you know, day going? And she's like, girl, I just really just been trying to focus on God. And she was in an organization, too. And she was like, you know, I said, so have you been, you know, doing anything with your organization? She was like, girl, I kind of pulled away from him. Mm. So I was like, okay. I was like, so what you doing? And she was like, you know, I just want to go grow a strong relationship with God. So I was like, okay. I was like, man, you know, God has been good. He's been too good to me. I said, you know, he allowed my baby to live. She's strong. She's healthy. She have no delays. So I remember when she said that, I was like, okay. I was like, you know, I remember going to sleep. Before I went to sleep, I said, Lord, I said, whatever you have for me, I said, Lord, I just want a better relationship with you. Mm. I said, whatever, you know, that I need to be taken away from, you know, just praying, you know, just trying to be sincere. And I was sleeping, and he gave me a dream. And I remember in that dream, um, he would uh, in that dream, um, I would sleep, and it was like a, um, it was like my body left my dream, and we was on campus. Like your your body left, uh, the, your spirit yeah, left yeah, your body. Yeah, yeah. And so I remember I was sleeping, and um, it was like in a dream, I was back on campus. Cause like uh, we was at, I remember we was at the DSC uh, room, well the DSC building, and we was in the foyer room on campus, and that's where like most like you know like when we had like meetings with other Greek organizations, that's where everybody go to for like a meeting. And so I remember um, being outside the door, and I remember one of the girls that you know I had pledged with. I remember her saying she was like Mercedes, she was like, "Girl, you know you get because you know we heard the music and stuff, you know that we were uh, stroll to and stuff." I remember her saying, "Hey, she like you know you you ready to go in?" And I remember her her saying, uh, "I said no." I said, "Hey, I got something to tell you." I said, "God has been dealing with me." I said, um, "You know He want me to denounce." And she was like, what? She was like, girl, we don't really have time for this. She was like, you know, uh, she's like, I don't get it. But, you know, she was like, that's you. And I was like, okay. And I said, but when we go in here, I said, don't stroll. I said, because, you know, I can't do it. She's like, all right, so your secret's safe for me. So we go into the room, and it's, uh, you know, some of the fraternity boy, uh, guys in there. And they like, what's up, Rez? And, you know, and at that point, it's like, God is like, you know, like, what you going to do? You know what I'm saying? And, and was that your, like, fraternity name or or? So, Rez? like. Yeah, so the fraternity, so you got fraternity and sorority. So the oh. sorority are like the girls, and fraternity are the, are the uh, guys. Got it. So the fraternity that was in it was like uh, Omega Sapphire. And so, like, you got Delta and you got Qs, and so they kind of like connected mm. together. But the guys that was in there, we kind of like cool with them. So I knew them person, like, on a person, like, we was always around each other, you know, laughing and talking and stuff like that. So when we got in there, you know, they was already hype and, you know, saying, like, what's up, Reds? Like, greeting. Cause when you're an organization, everybody had their own greeting with different organizations. Like, mm. you got the Deltas and the Qs, the SGROs and the Kappas. And then the AKs and the Alphas. And so when we went in there, you know, they was already hype, you know, happy to see us and stuff. And, you know, the sun was coming on. And I told her, I was like, don't stroll. Because, like, each organization or each, you know, return to really have their own, like, you know, stroll. Like a well, dance? It's a, yeah, it's like, a, like a walk? It's like a walk. Like, we got, like, you know, uh, not we, but, you know, they have, like, you know, 
they got like uh, the duck walk, which is like for deltas. Got it. And you know, and so like everybody got their own like little stroll that they do for they you know own organization, whether it's a distro, you know, a hype stroll. So it's just like different stuff that each organization do. And so um, a song came on. I remember it was called it was Wipe Me Down. And that's like one of the highest songs that everybody strolled to. And so uh, I told her, I was like, don't stroll. I was like, cause I'm telling you, you know, I'm not gonna do it with you. And I remember them looking at us like, you know, like what's going on? And so they were like, what's going on, what's going on Reds? And that's what they call, you know, the Deltas and stuff. I remember she was saying, she was like, you know, the only uh, Delta, the only Red that's in here is me because Mercedes is denouncing. Mm. And so my eyes just got big and I was like, what? I was like, it's like they went into attack mode. They was like, what? You denouncing? You know, because when you go on YouTube, there's a lot of people on YouTube that just are denouncing. I remember them like going like in on me, like, you know, like, are you just like those people on YouTube? You know, you're saying, you know, the reason why you denounce is because, you know, it's staring away your relationship with God. I mean, they were just hounding me. And it was like, and even in like that moment, it was like I was sitting down and it was like I was like at an altar. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, and I remember like I could hear like them arguing, them fussing, you know, talking, you know, just, you know, just like, why would you do that? You know, it's going in and like I could hear God saying, choose me this day. You know what mm. I'm saying? So it was like, God was like, hey, choose me or them. And I was like, okay, God, you know, I choose you. Cause it was like, it was getting hot. Like it was getting like heated. It was just like, God was just like, either you're going to choose me or choose them. It's like, if you choose them, you already know the ending of it. So I remember I was, I woke up and I was like, Ooh, like, okay, God. I was like, you know, it's like, like you said, like my spirit left. And then it came back and like, okay, God, I was like, okay. I'm gonna get rid of everything, you know what I'm saying? And so, but even then, like, you know, that dream was like a wake up call. It's like he wasn't done with me. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, I had that dream that day. And like, you know, I started like, you know, packing up stuff, you know, putting stuff in uh, trash bags and stuff. And like, I went to sleep again. And it was like, I had another dream. This dream was, you know, I was walking on campus and, you know, we have like kickoffs. So kickoffs is when the school start, you know, all the degrees come together, you know, we stroll, you know, basically, like, you know, you got the freshmen coming in from college, you know, you got all newcomers. So kickoffs were all like, you know, the alphas, the Qs, the capitals, like all the organizations come around, you know, we strolling and kind of like, you know, giving everybody a scene and letting people know like who, who we represent. And so I remember like, I don't know why I was walking on campus, but I remember walking, I remember like one of the, like I said, you know, I played 2016, 2018, you know, I brought a group of girls through and I remember I was walking by and uh, one of them was like, hey mama, hey mama, cause that's what they call me. And so I was like, hey, I was like, you know, I'm not your mom. It's like, what you talking about? Cause that's what they call me, you know? And I was like, I was like, I got something to tell y'all. Cause all of them weren't there, but it was like maybe two or three of them. And I was like, I got something to tell you. I was like, you know, you know, God has been dealing with me. I was like, um, but I plan on, I said, I plan on denouncing my letters. And I remember like, she was like, what? And I was like, you know, I was like, yeah. I was like, man, God has been, God has been dealing with me. And I was like, you know, I plan on denouncing. She's like, Shh. and I was like, why is she shushing me? You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, maybe she didn't hear me. I was like, I'm playing on. Sh and I was like, what? And she was like, don't, don't say that. I like, don't say what she said. Don't say you denouncing because of God. And it was like, what? You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, I was getting shushed to say, like, why was I doing Like, you know, like, I was just trying to say, like, you know, hey, I'm denouncing because this is what God want me to do. But in the midst of me saying I'm denouncing because of God, she would shush me after that. And, like, when she would shush me, I remember screaming in my dream. I was like, I denounced. I denounced. I denounced. Because it was like, it was almost like the enemy was trying to keep my mouth closed from saying, like, no, don't tell them you're doing it because of God. You know what I'm saying? So... It was just like after that, I didn't I didn't ask for my pastor, you know, like I, I didn't like I didn't have to ask for a second advice. I didn't have to call nobody. It was just like God was just like, choose me this day because if you don't, like, you're not gonna enter into heaven. And so, um it was scary because it was like we come you go to college and things that seem so like innocent, you know what I'm saying? Like Things that seem like so like it can be deceived because in my eyes I'm thinking like okay this is just you know seamless you know it ain't harming nobody but it was um uh, a decision I made and God was like you know 
Not only did you make a decision, but you made a covenant. Mm. I'm sorry, but it's okay. Take your time. I'm not sad, but I just thank God for for having mercy over me. You know, because you know we pledge to things and we agree to things, and not knowing the effect. You know, and I didn't know that I made a covenant with something that I should never made a covenant with. You know, because. I kneel down in front of the altar, you know what I'm saying? And I pledge and I agree with something that I had no idea that I had basically sold my soul to, you know what I'm saying? So it's bigger than, you know, just chanting. It's bigger than, you know, saying like, oh, I'm in an organization. No, you're connecting your spirit with something that is not of God, mm. you know? And so looking back, I just thank God for having mercy over me you know for me being obedient for me being um uh, quick you know what i'm saying like because like, i could have like the dream was so real like i just feel like if i waited i would have ran out of time mm. you know and that's just how i feel like god was giving me like this is your last chance you know you know this is your time to choose me because if not Tomorrow is never promised. Right. So, you know, and I was just like, even now, like, you know, when I hear like different songs, you know, when I, when I reminisce on some of the stuff, like not that I miss it, but when I be like, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, we say, I'm like, dang, God, like, you know, I really was in this. You know what I'm saying? I really kneel to an altar. I really pledged to something that was not of you because they make it pretty, you know, and they make it seem like it's harmless, but it's it's not, you know. And, you know, I remember God telling me, like, you either going to serve me or serve them because you can't serve two guys. That was the thing, you know, that God, like, brought to me, like, even, like, you know, now, like, you know, you have people that are in church and stuff like that, and people that are in church and, and they have, you know, they uphold leadership, you know what I'm saying? Because we had people that will be, you know, missionaries or, you know, first ladies that was in an organization, you know, they would come to church, and but they'll put their they letters on after church, and it's like, you can't do both, you know what I'm saying? That's what God was telling me, like, you know, you have to choose me. You know, because he's a jealous guy. You know, you, you can't play both sides. And even being in an organization, like, you know, there's no two sides. You either fuck God or you ain't. And that's basically what he was telling me. Like, you know, I gave you mercy. And that's why I thank God that he's patient. He's longevity. You know what I'm saying? Because I could have died and my soul still would have been, you know, bonded to that. You know, mm -hmm. it still would have been connected to that. But he still gave me grace and mercy, yeah. you know, to be disconnected. Because, you know, we, growing up, we always talk about, you know, generational curses. I didn't know that by me pledging, not only did I pledge something, but I, I started like, I ain't gonna say I started the curse, but I created something that could have passed down to my baby, you know, right. had I not got out. I'm just grateful that I was able to, you know, do that and, and God to lead and guide me to, to you know, to uh, denounce my letters because when I done it I had no I didn't think second about it and in the midst of me denouncing like it was a burden lifted off my shoulder like and that's how I knew that it was of God because you don't realize how something heavy can be on your shoulders like you yeah. know it was like a burden so when I you know I burnt up the stuff it was like something just released like my body just became like light you know it was just like this is what I need to do. This is something I was supposed to have done a long time ago, but God still gave me grace, you know, to do that. So I'm just forever grateful. Um, and, and, you know, even when I denounced, you know, the ladies, they didn't understand. Some of them, you know, I still talk to, and some of them like, you know, I don't really understand why you did it. And I told them, I said, well, I didn't do it for y'all. I didn't do it for me. I said, but but by me denouncing, it's not to, you know, cause conviction towards you. I said, because if you have a conviction, then you see God. Because whatever God showed me, he may show you, you know, differently. So I just told them, like, you know, I'm not judging you to still be in the organization. But, you know, look, think about the stuff that we did, we said. I was like... If you don't have any conviction to it, then, I mean, maybe you don't see it, but I still pray, you know, that God show you. Because right. I even had a young lady that was in the same organization as me, 
And I remember she reached out to me and she said, Mercedes, she was like, you know, I know that there are certain things that we say in the organization that's contrary to God. I said, but I put so much money in, mm -hmm. you know, and I put so much time in. So she was like, I feel like, you know, there's no harm intended. She was like, so when we sing certain stuff, I just don't say it. I said, but you're still allowing yourself to be in that circle, to still be a part of that covenant that is not of God's. And I even told her, I said, think about the songs we sing. Think about how we sing, you know, all of my love, my peace and happiness, you know, belongs to Delta, mm. you know, you know, and I said, you know, don't you see that? She was like, yeah. She was like, but I just feel like I put too much in, but I'm like, regardless of how much time you put, when God come back, it's not going to matter. I was like, you know, like what we do for God is what's going to last. What we do on earth is going to pass over. So I was right. just like, you know, it's not for me to, you know, tell you, you know, the end time and what's going to happen. I said, but I told her, I said, you seek God. You ask God to show you because he may show you a different way. You know, I always been showed dreams. When I was a kid, I always dreamed dreams. And I remember uh, my mama used to tell me I used to have dreams and she'd be like, and say that was a gift from God. And I say, my mom want this gift. Because as a kid, I used to uh, be scared of them because I didn't understand them. But anything that I said always came to pass. Mm. And I used to tell mom, I said, Mama, I said, I pray that God is taken from me. She said, no, nah, baby, that's a gift. That's a gift that God gave you. So even in the midst of this testimony, it's like, I'm glad I did it because I was being obedient and I wanted to, you know, to live for God and, to, you know, go to heaven. But even in my denouncing, it's like people that, that you know that I was connected to, they're they're starting to question it. You know, they're starting to go through the rituals that, you know, we read and so like, oh man, you know, this is not of God. Now I see what you're saying. So I just hope and pray that, you know, people do see, you know, that even if things seem, you know, it may seem like, you know, like seamless or, you know, you know, harmless. It, harmless yeah. yeah. You know, it's 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 you know, it's not it's not, it's okay, but it's it's not because mm. it's an attachment that that can literally you know change your identity, you know, take you from you know the will of God and stuff like that. So I'm just forever grateful for God saving my life, and that I have you know I'm able to share this testimony just to bring you know awareness, you know, because we always say you know like when COVID nineteen came, you know, bring awareness to that. But I feel like it's you know, people need to know that it's not okay to be in this organization. Like, there is, you know, some demonic stuff that's in the, in the organization, you know, that have you questioning, you know, it should be questioned because it's not based on Christian principles. You know, everything that that's done in the organization is nothing of God. You know, they make it seem like it's okay, but it's not. It's not at all. Mercedes, who is Jesus to you? That man is my, my Lord and Savior. Like, he's my rock, you know, like, he's my beginning and the end. Like, I will forever be bold. And I'm getting teary out because I'm not sad, but it's just like, Jesus is just that good. And I would tell anybody, like, I would be bold for him, you know, and that's what he, he's wanting. Like, he wanted people to be bold, to bring where there is darkness, there is light. So, like, you know, like, he is the light of my life. And I will forever be, you know, bold and, and be strong and be willing to testify and say whatever needs to be done so that he gets the glory and so that souls do be saved. And so that's just who he is to me. Mercedes, for people who are watching your testimony right now, who maybe f are finding themselves in a sorority uh, or even in a fraternity, right? And uh, this is new to them and they don't know uh, what to do or how to respond uh, what is a word of encouragement that you can give to those who are watching right now, who are currently in these organizations? My word to you is that don't be afraid to question things that you're in. I mean, everybody don't have a foundation of, you know, growing up in church. But I feel like, you know, when we do go to college, you know, don't just think about it as like the history. Go deeper into it because that was the thing that, you know, didn't nobody tell me, you know, and don't just think about the history. Think about, like, you know, the meaning of it. Go deeper because, like, I just looked at the colors. I just looked at the chants. But when you break down their crust, when you break down their songs and stuff like that, that what you need to do. You know, you have to be willing to be accepting to to the uh the um the truth you know sometimes you know we, we research things and we see it and just don't be blindsided you know like 
and and be okay with asking questions because even if you do join, you know, ask them the questions, you know, ask them like, you know, is this of God, you know, question them and see what they say because at the end of the day, like, we live in the last days. And so I feel like, you know, if you are in an organization, you are thinking about it, think about, you know, uh, what are you doing it for, you know, and, and does it please God? You know, is this of God? Because that's the thing that did nobody tell me, you know, they, you know, like I said, they told me that it was of the devil, but nobody broke it down. Nobody broke it down to, you know, the ritual, to the songs on, you know, how it was contrary to what the word of God says. Mm. So I just feel like, you know, and be bold in your faith. You know, if you grew up in church, you know, be bold with it, you know what I'm saying? And be okay with calling out things that are not of God because mm -hmm. as end of the day that's all what matters so i just feel like you know just you know d just do your research but also you know just ask god for understanding pray about it and just let the holy spirit lead you amen um mercedes for for those who are wanting to denounce and maybe they don't know where to start can you very briefly just talk to us about that process of denouncing and what does that look like um, so the denouncing process is pretty easy. Um, like for me, some people public didn't denounce and some people renounce. And so what I did was after, um, you know, I had denounced my letters, I had, you know, each organization, they have like, you know, where you can write in to the headquarters. So like Delta, I wrote to Delta, you know, and they have like a, um, not a slot, but if you go on a page is where, you know, you can write in a letter. And then once you pull it, uh, once you click on that link, it'll say, you know, my reason for denouncing you know and it'll have you you know put your reason whether it's like you know financial reason or you know you being hazed from when i did it I, I my reason for it is because like i just said like you know because i feel like this is what god chose me you know had me to do and they even have an option for that i can't remember exactly the word but it was like funny to me because it was like they even have that option to where you know you either uh denouncing because of like your personal reason or because of your christian belief like religious religious belief like, yeah. expression yes. or something like that yeah. and so when i seen that i was like y'all have it on here so obviously, you know, it got to be more people that have done it, but like mm. they, I, it was just mind blown that they even had that option on there. Once you do that, you write your, you know, little synopsis on why you did it, and then you just send it in. And then once you do that, they'll write you back and say, you know, you are, uh, you are no, no longer like they'll say, you know, I, I'm sorry to lose you. You're no longer a part of the organization. We ask that you know you return all paraphernalia or send it over to headquarters, or you know they just want you, you know, to get rid of anything that was of that organization. And the crazy part about it is that. I didn't realize until one of the ladies had brought it to my attention was that when I denounced and I just read, you know, I just wrote it. I was like, okay, I'm finna, you know, write myself out of this organization. Each uh, application, when you say I and you say, say your name, it says, I, Mercedes, you know, have, you know, denounced and stuff like that. And it says, I also, you know, promise to not share any secrets and uh, sacred trust organ of the organization. And so when uh, my friend girl told me that, I said, oh, shoot. I said, I had promised that I wouldn't share it. And she's like, yeah, they did that to try to hush you up, saying that, you know, that you wouldn't, you know, not only did you denounce, but you won't share, like, you know, any sacred tr um, uh, secrets that, you know, we have in the organization. Mm. So I was like, well, that's out the door. I said, because I'm going to share it, you know what I'm saying? Because people need to know what's going on in these organizations and, you know, and what comes with it. And so um, I just thought that that was like, you know, not crazy, but I just, I didn't see that. I just wrote it, you know, not knowing, you know, what I had agreed to. But at the end of the day, I really don't care. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah. Mercedes, any last words for people who are watching uh, your testimony right now? My last words would be like, you know, be bold and and continue to let God use you. I also want to, you know, apologize to any other ladies, you know, in the organization, you know, that I had brought through, that I had hurt, you know, whether I had, you know, you know, talked down on, you know, because I don't want to say that wasn't me, you know, because that was obviously me. But I do want to apologize, you know, for saying anything that may have hurt them or anything like that. Like, I, I deeply apologize for hurting you or anyone in the organization, whether they, you know, was in the organization or those that did not make it into the organization. You know, I do apologize for anything or any hurt that I may have caused. Um, and that's really about it. Lastly, Mercedes, could you just pray for those who are watching right now and are receiving what you're saying, are realizing 
that this is not of God and they are wanting to renounce, they're wanting to lay it down. Could you just pray for them um, to receive that courage and whatever else they need to be able to take that step? Yes, yes. Um, yes. Um, Heavenly Father, I want to say, Lord, thank you, God, for this opportunity. Um, Lord, I ask that you uh, cover those that are watching this video. God, I ask, Lord, that you... Open up their mind and their understanding, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you make it clear to the Lord that they know that it's you. God, I ask, Lord, that you just open up their hearts, Lord. Even when they seek you, Father, Lord, that, Lord, that they find you, Father, Lord, and they get the answers that need to be done in order to denounce their letters, Father, Lord, in order to bring them to understanding, Father, Lord. And, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you just cover them, Father, Lord, even in the midst of their decision, Lord. I pray that no weapon form against them, Lord, shall prosper, God. And I ask, Lord, that you just not only cover them, Father, Lord, but cover their families, Father, Lord. And, Lord, that I ask, Lord, that even in the midst of everything that's going on in the world, Father, I pray just cover them, Lord, and let them know, Father, Lord, that you are God, Father, Lord, and that you, we know that you are the beginning and the end, and Lord, we know that, that you will never leave us nor forsake us because you said in your word. So I ask, Lord, that you just cover them, bless the ones that are watching, Father, Lord, and I ask, Lord, that they feel any conviction, Father, Lord, that they spirit lead them to make the right decision, Father, Lord, to flee from the enemy, Father, Lord, that they be free, Lord, that they souls be free, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.